be with you for the night. All right. You know, is that all right? Let me stop. Hey, y'all. I love to welcome y'all back to my podcast, I Like It Raw. My name is Mikala Leinani. If this is your first time to my podcast, welcome. Hello. She all jeweled up. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you already go ahead and hit the like button. Comment on this motherfucker saying hello and subscribe to my motherfucking channel. Because your girl, she's doing a lot of things, a lot of great things, a lot of things for the community, which is one of the most important things to me. A lot of things for these children, which is one of the biggest things that we need to focus on in this world right now. Because the focal point for a lot of us, you know, is on the materialistic things in this world. And that's just continuously being taught to generation, each generation down. Um, materialism is bullshit, y'all. I have been going through so many things and it has definitely been a learning experience for me. So I can't wait to drop the episode about everything and all the lessons that I have learned this year. But seeing as though there's so much happening within social media and especially to kids, I would just love to touch on that. Because kids are cruel. Kids are taught to be cruel. Kids are taught to hurt each other. And that's a problem, y'all. We got women that's having babies and they're babies themselves. And sometimes these women that are having babies were not properly taught how to be a woman. And they don't have any support systems behind them. So... The thing is, y'all, I've heard about so many kids that, you know, they get bullied in school. Kids that get bullied in school and, you know, just get bullied trying to be themselves. You know what I'm saying? Ever since I was younger, I never felt like I belonged in this world. I knew this is not where I'm from. Like, I 100% know I'm not of this world ever since I was a little girl I was just I was always secluded to myself um I would have friends but friends I wouldn't even call them friends I had associates while I was growing up um but because I moved so much like I never really developed friendships you get what I'm saying so for me having friends was something that was it's not I'm not used to that you know what I'm saying there's a lot of people or some a few people. I ain't going to say a lot of people. There are some people that are still friends with the people that they were in elementary school with. Now, kudos to y'all because I'm, excuse the background noise, cats. But kudos to y'all because I'm just trying to figure out after you go through so many stages of life, you develop differently sometimes than the other person does. And for those people that do have those same friends who have not switched up on them and, you know, what have you, it is amazing to see. I love that. But, again, back to me where I had no friends, I had associates. I was called a nigger in school, bro. And I went to an all-white fucking school for all of my life. All of my life, from elementary school, if you all are familiar with the Michigan area of West Bloomfield... It's white, okay? It's white. So I grew up in all white schools, you know what I'm saying? And these white kids couldn't relate to me. They couldn't relate to me. And in some ways, they looked at me as a uh, abnormal abnormality in their world because back when I was going to school in the area that I went to school in, I was one of five black kids in that school. It was two of us that was in the same grade, me and this boy named Jordan. Um, And then once I kind of, see my thing is, I moved so many different schools. So when I was at my first elementary school, it was me and one black kid. Um, I stayed there from kindergarten to first grade, left second, no, kindergarten to second grade, left in the middle of second grade, come came back in third grade, left in fourth grade, and came back in fifth grade. 
I, my family moved a lot, so I was always going to different schools. But I left there, and I went to a school in Linden, Linden, Michigan. It's white, white as fuck. And that's where I was called a nigger on the bus by a white kid. You know what I'm saying? So, again, me having friends, it was seldom and far in between, few and far in between, y'all. It just, it just seemed like it didn't happen for me. Um, but the friends that I was friends with, like I said, they were very interested in me because I, was, I wasn't the normal thing that you would see in their school. I was a b young black girl. My hair, you know, your parents, if you're black or, you know, of ethnic, of ethnic background, you know, they used to twist your hair and put the little barrettes at the fucking ends of your hair with the two balls that motherfucking beat your brains out. Yes. I had those and my hair was so like so long. Like I have hair. I just like to keep my hair cut, FYI. But they would want to touch my fucking hair. Like, come on now. They would want to touch my hair. And what was sad was it wasn't even the white kids that teased me. You know? As I progressed in age and in obviously grade. It was around like third grade where I started getting teased because more black people started coming to my school. That is fucking sad, y'all. It's, it's horrible because now that I'm seeing, oh my God, there's more people that look like me, light skin, dark skin, whatever. They are of ethnic background. They are not white. They're not caucus. You know what I'm saying? But I'm thinking like, oh, this is going to be great. Now, back in school, I was a chunky little kid, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really participate in sports because I was so uncomfortable. I would go home crying every day because it was just like I had nobody with me. And a, like I had nobody that was my friend and that was backing me. And especially as the years progressed, it just got worse. Because, like I said, more black kids integrated into the area where I was going to school, which was mostly white. And then they would just tease me because... They're, oh, you fat. Oh, you ugly. Oh, why you look like... Y'all, kids are fucking cruel. And I don't even want to say it's, like, just a black thing, but goddamn, I experienced getting teased only by black fucking kids. And it didn't make any fucking sense to me. And it still doesn't to this day. But I know the reason why these kids are the way they are because their parents didn't teach them any better because their parents be thinking that that shit is fucking funny. Now, <clears throat> let me just cut to the parents real quick because, you know, I'm going to definitely come back to these motherfucking rude ass kids. But let me cut to the parents real quick. If you are pregnant and obviously you're young, do not be a disgraceful parent. And I'm going to just say this with a whole 100% honesty. You may be going through a situation. It may be a tough situation. But do not teach your kids that it is okay to shit on another kid, especially another kid of their same fucking color. And I am speaking to the black women, the Mexican women, the Hispanic. I am speaking to all ethnic women that are having these kids. Ethnic women, ethnic young women that are having these kids and seem like they can't teach them to have respect and manners and care and love for one another. You are the fucking problem. So once your kid gets they ass beat by that one kid in school that just get fed the fuck up, don't say motherfucking shit because you are the problem. You're over here teaching your kid that it is okay to talk down on somebody. Yeah, call them ugly. Do this, do this. And it's not like they're doing that in defense of themselves. Because a lot of these kids will start the shit. You know what I'm saying? I remember back in fucking middle school, I was, like I said, I was a fucking a fat kid. You know, I was, I was big bone. <laughs> I was big bone. If I could find a big bone, I was big bone. You know? But they would say I was as, like, even my own fucking family. That's why I don't be believing in the world fucking family. But even my own sisters was like, oh, you as big as a fucking house. And they would go back and forth with each other on who said it. Oh, I didn't say it. She said it. Oh, I didn't say it. She said it. But nah, they would tease me too. I'm talking about, oh, she's as big as, as big as a house. And there was one that really stuck with me was 
man, you a beach with a uh, beach well washed up on the motherfucking beach and shit like that. Black kids, black kids that I was even like I was even cool with at that time. You know how they do the little, the little roast sessions. I wasn't quick on my feet with roast. I was very sensitive, so everybody would clown on me. It's like I had no fucking backbone. I would just go home and fucking cry. And it was just like, in some ways, I would just sit there and take it because I'm just, one, I was tired of being, uh, I was tired of being around the fucking caucus nation, nigga. Like, don't nobody want to always be around motherfucking crackers? And this ain't, you know, like, this ain't obviously to be offensive, but I'm going to speak my motherfucking mind. If you don't like how I'm saying this shit, get the fuck up on off my page. Get the fuck up off and off this episode. It ain't for you. But when I'm hanging around a whole bunch of white people all my life, I do want to be able to integrate myself in with my own people. Um, <clears throat> or people that I think would be able to relate with me. But no, I try to do that and I just ended up continuously getting clowned and roasted and you know just my self-esteem was I mean six feet under it was painful it hurt and it's like as a child as a child knowing as a grown woman now knowing that it's the parents that are teaching their children this you got fucking hood rat ass mamas being hood rat and smoking in their kid face and shit. Drinking in their kid face and shit. You know, blowing the shit in their face thinking that shit is funny. What the fuck is wrong with you bitches? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? See, there's cases where CPS don't have to come in but for bitches like this. Come on now. But anywho, when I'm saying like, it's sad. That you all are teaching these kids to do this, not in defense of themselves, but to make it seem like they're on the pinnacle of whatever ladder is in the fucking school or wherever they're at. You guys, y'all are wrong. And I know y'all weren't loved. I knew y'all went through some hardship. I understand that. But fuck you. Fuck you and what you went through because you aren't, cheap. You aren't teaching these kids properly. Just because you went through hurt and through pain doesn't mean that you continue teaching your kids hurt and pain to alleviate your hurt and pain, although it has nothing to do with each other, but you think that this is going to stop your kid from going through the hurt and pain that you went through. No, motherfucker. Now, there's people or kids that's having school shootings. What about that? Hmm? What about your child being the bully? So this one kid that would just be trying to, you know, trying to be in his own little world. You know what I'm saying? This child wants to be left alone and feels like they can't have anybody to talk to. They feel like the odd one out. They feel like the weird one. Hence myself. What about that kid? Now that kid keep getting teased nowadays. This motherfucker gonna come back and blow your motherfucking shit out, huh? And you guys sit here and wonder why these things happen. Because kids be bullying kids. And some kids get fucking fed up with that shit. And they say, well, fuck it. I'm going to just go ahead and blow this shit out. So there was a school shooting in Oxford. Oxford, Michigan. Um, at Oxford, was it high school? <clears throat> Obviously, being teased and being bullied goes past elementary and middle school. It goes into high school. It still goes into fucking college and goes into adulthood. So I don't know the backstory behind this kid or why he shot up the place. But at the end of the day, a lot of these things can be prevented if parents would teach their kids to treat other people with respect and with kindness and love. But no, a lot of these people are tired of being bullied. A lot of these kids are sick of being I mean, the laughing stock of the fucking world. A lot of these kids are tired of being co considered the unpopular ones when there's no such thing as popularity in school. You are all, all of us that were in school and all of us that are not in school are on the same motherfucking level. We are all human. Now, the only thing that's going to be different is in terms of your fucking mental level, your spiritual level. That's the only place you're bypassing anybody. But at the end of the day, you bleed red just like me, right? Or do I believe red? No, nah, I believe red, but shit. You know what I'm fucking saying? You can hurt just like I hurt. You know what I'm saying? That shit is sick. So when it comes to these kids that are fed up, 
causing this havoc in school. Other people, I mean, kids end up getting killed and shot that weren't even involved in it. That might have been sweet kids. And you sit here and you, you just mourn. You continuously mourn the death of kids that were shot and killed by another student. Or kids that were harmed by another student. And I do, I, my heart goes out to the families who lost kids off of school shootings, off of any type of shootings, off of violence, because this world is fucked up. But can we sit back and ask sometimes, what was the cause for this kid to just snap? Hmm? Because if it was me, I, I didn't have a backbone, but if I could go back, I would beat somebody ass one good motherfucking time just to show y'all stop fucking with me. Because back in the day, school shootings and shit, that shit was not, you know, it didn't evolve into that. But now it has. So do I wish I could have beat somebody ass one good time just so I could have, you know, understood or let them know? Yeah. But now I know. It has built me into my character, and now I have hella backbone, nigga. Don't even try and step on me, because I got fucking, I got spikes on my spine, nigga. You step on me, that shit going through your motherfucking foot. Let's talk about the sad part of it. The kids that just can't handle it and take their own fucking lives because of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about the kids that commit suicide because they're not strong enough to keep dealing with the bullshit that these other kids are bringing to their fucking doorsteps. I was one of those kids that wanted to commit suicide. I had multiple attempts. And I'm not afraid to speak of that shit. Some people will be ashamed. But what am I here to be ashamed of? I'm here to give y'all the knowledge so y'all know. And so y'all can do better. And teach this generation to do better. It hurts to come. <sighs> <clears throat> It hurts to come back from school every day crying and telling my mom that I don't want to be here anymore because these kids are being mean to me because they're calling me names because they're hurting my feelings constantly. I just can go back and remember feeling like I would not make it through. And this is the reason why kids take their lives because they don't think they can make it through. It hurts. Because I know that exact feeling that these kids that have taken their lives feel. I understand how they felt. And I'm pretty sure each and every one of you can go back to a time in your life where you were bullied and where you were hurt. And that might have caused you to build this tough outer shell and have your guard up all the time. But I know each and every one of us can go back to a moment in time where we were hurt. You know what I'm saying? And some handled it different than others. But for those kids that felt like they couldn't make it to the next day because they couldn't see through this situation, what about those kids? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I was tired of coming home to my mom crying. And it got to a point where I felt like she didn't even care. Because what my mom, she is a Taurus now. We are two different people. I'm a Leo Virgo cuss. And at the end of the day, I'm about action. I want you to take action. What my mom would tell me every time I would come home, just ignore it. Just ignore it. They're mean. You're beautiful. You're this. You're that. But it's so hard to believe what one person is saying when you have five other reinforcements of negativity going against that. You know what I'm saying? Saying otherwise. And so with that, like, there would be times when I would be, I remember our house so vividly, but we had a bedroom on the first floor right when you work, walked into the place. And right when you walked through the, first, the front door, it was a bedroom to the left, like a little hallway and a bedroom to the left. And my mom, she, that was her room. And I would go to the kitchen and grab knives and, like, tell her, like, I'm tired of this and just stand there with the knife because I just, I wanted help. I wanted love. I needed, I needed security. I needed action. 
And it's like, just thank goodness that the few attempts that I have tried never were successful. But for the kids who were successful, unfortunately successful in taking their life because they couldn't see past that moment. There has to be something done. There has to be a change. And it has to start with these fucked up parents, bro. Y'all need to change, bro. Y'all need to do something different, my guy. Y'all have to be better. I know this episode may not be heard, you know, by kids, but if you are listening, sweetheart, and you got this fucking far, just believe me when I tell you it doesn't last forever. It doesn't. I promise you. I pinky promise you it doesn't last. I know the hurt and the pain that y'all have felt because I was there myself and I thought I wasn't going to make it through. But I made it through. I overcame. And the funniest thing is, the same people that teased me are the same motherfuckers that be on my ass today. Oh, you fine as hell. Oh, you this, you that nigga. Yeah, do you not remember all the shit you said to me when we were younger? Oh, and I bet that shit will be, oh, well, I was just playing. Nigga, fuck you just playing. You was just an asshole. You was just fucked up. Okay? Them same motherfuckers that treat these kids wrong that was teasing you back in the day, kissing your ass now, and you just be sitting here like, oh, how how the chimes have changed. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas is just nigging. Kids is being fucked up. And they think it's okay. But trust me, they come back around. They kiss that ass. Oh, they kiss that ass. There are so many people that I went to school with. In middle school. And if y'all are watching this, I know y'all remember me. Hello, motherfuckers. The ones that had all that shit to say, always running that motherfucking lip. Hello, motherfucker. Now you want to be in my DM on Instagram asking when we can hang out. Never, nigga. That's why I haven't opened your shit. The fuck? The fuck do I look like? Nigga? What wrong with you? Cross the head. But these motherfuckers just don't get it. They just don't get it. Because you doing all this showboating in front of other kids, other people to make it seem like you're hot shit and all that stuff, that shit comes back and bites you in the motherfucking ass. It really does. Like, ten times out of ten it will happen. And just because you, the person that was hurt, doesn't see it, don't believe it doesn't happen. Because I know spirit always got me. I know spirit always got me. 100%. And... Regardless, I see what happens to the person that hurt me or whatever. It doesn't matter. But it feels good to know that I am taken care of. And it feels good to know that I can overcome every anything and I have overcame. And I will continue to overcome. I am spirit. I am the creator. The fuck we talking about? All in all, I'm going to need you parents. You fucked up parents. You young motherfucking women. You young motherfucking men. Teach your kids the right way. Stop teaching them to clown on kids, to make jokes on kids, to do all that. Teach them to love each other. Teach teach your kids to stand with the next motherfucking kid of their ethnicity. The fuck? We over here se- uh, separating ourselves and creating our own type of segregation. Why? Teach your kid to unify and love each other. And fuck what hood you from, nigga. I don't give a shit. Do you bleed red? Yes, you do. And is there one, is there, is there one race that will shun you, shit on you, belittle you? Yes. And for the most part, it's a caucus. So why keep teaching your kids to shun, shit, and belittle each other, you ethnic motherfuckers, instead of teaching them to unify, love, and overcome? Get your motherfucking shit together. Because that's what I'm here to preach. I'm not here to preach hate. But I am going to cut you a new motherfucking asshole because you old and you don't know better. I'm going to whoop you over this motherfucking camera, nigga. 
Anywho, kids, y'all got this. If y'all are watching, you got it. If you have been teased, just know there is better coming for you, baby. Focus on that bag. Focus on what makes you happy. Because these kids, these kids that are rude and talk to you like you ain't shit, time heals all wounds and, and the darkness will always come to light. Okay? Darkness will always come to light. And be mindful, y'all. If these kids that are teasing you, people that are teasing you, harassing you, because this goes, obviously, like I said, it goes past elementary, middle, and high school. It goes into college. It goes into adulthood. If these people that are doing that to you, look, just look. When they say all that shit, just smile. Mm. Hit them with that one wink. Because, mm. hey, one thing, they might be scared of your ass afterwards. Oh, she... That was kind of weird. What the fuck was that? She might be crazy. She might come back and shoot you. You never motherfucking know. And I ain't saying it's okay to come back and shoot. But these people that keep treating people like shit, don't be expecting everybody to handle you the same way because you're going to come across the right motherfucker that's going to show you something. You know what I'm saying? And don't, don't, don't let it, don't let it be like that. Don't let it be like that. Focus on your bag. Focus on what the fuck makes you happy. And do better. We need to unite. We need to be... We need to have each other's backs. We need to love one another because love is the only thing that is real here. I, come to, I came to reality yesterday that none of this shit fucking matters. I was hearing an argument on the phone... And it was in regards to one of my situations. It's a situation about me that involves me, but I'll just have to get into a deeper conversation in regards to this in another episode. But when I was just hearing what was said, it literally just hit me in the fucking face. None of this shit is real and none of this shit matters. Yeah, this shit is fucking crazy. But all in all, I would really, really appreciate y'all for coming to watch and listen to this episode of I Like It Raw. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you are watching me on motherfucking Instagram or YouTube. Excuse me. If you are watching me on YouTube, share this video. Let people know. Share this to parents where you know their kids is just fucked up. Because, yeah, I'm talking to your bitch ass. If you are on Instagram, make sure you follow me on my Instagram at Mikala Leinani, M-I-K-A-L-A-L-E-I-N-A-N-I. You can follow my podcast Instagram as well at I Like It Raw Podcast. And you can follow my skating page at MK Skates with two Z's at the end, no S. And now you can follow my cat's page because my kitties have a page. My two little kids. Uh, I'm going to put it on the screen somewhere. Onyx and Eclipse with periods in between. Goddamn, I don't know if I put a fucking and yeah, onyx dot and dot eclipse. So I truly appreciate y'all. If y'all are listening to me on any of your major listening platforms, go ahead and share this episode around. I truly appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all stay high strapped up and safe. And I will see y'all in my next episode.